Hello and welcome to the Duck and Well YouTube channel. I'm your host Lee Dean. Today we're talking about ice, internal combustion engine, and e fuels. Now you've probably noticed that Porsche has committed billions of dollars to electrifying its range. It says by 2025, 50% of its models will be battery electrified and stating that it will be CO2 neutral by 2030. Now this goal poses a problem for a car company that does a lot of racing. We're talking about Porsche, and here's a car company that's heavily involved in motorsport, cars, all its flagship are hot motorsport. More customers are involved in motorsport, the company's involved in motorsport, the brand is entrenched in motorsport. So how do they get around this? The German car manufacturer, together with a bunch of partners, has kicked off a project to produce nearly CO2 neutral fuel in Chile. That's right. So together with electrified cars, they're going to run CO2 neutral internal combustion engine cars. Porsche has always stated that 70% of all the cars that they've ever produced are still on the road and driving because everyone loves them. They love to restore them. They're going up in value. And not everyone wants to jump on the stick of battery in the 911 bandwagon. So this CO2 neutral fuel, Porsche's eyes could be the answer to keeping these classics on the road. So this on paper sounds amazing. You get to keep driving your classic Porsche without killing the environment. Not that weekend drives in a classic car is going to factor at all compared to a daily commute. But when the regulations start becoming tighter and tighter, and some countries could ban internal combustion engines altogether. No, God, please, no! This fuel could be the answer. So just like the enthusiast that wants to drive their classic car on the weekend, motorsport itself has a problem with tightening regulations. What happens to racing? Now, obviously there is the e-racing series, which is great for development of road cars, making motorsport the test bed for the road as it always has been whether it's exciting to watch or whether it has the same heart and passion that formula one has remains to be seen but porsche is using its international mobile one super cup series to be the test bed for this carbon neutral fuel the, the use of this fuel in internal combustion engines reduces the co2 emissions by 90 percent and plans to use the fuel out of the new chilean plant in the super cup series when? By 2022. It's not too far away. And if you're watching this in 2022, it's now. And if you're watching it in 2024, what happened? Let us know and comment down below. Everyone on the art now! Now the International One Make Race Series supports Formula One around the world. And you can bet that if that's successful in the Super Cup Series, the people making the decisions of Formula One might notice. A statement from Porsche said, the prestige car maker and Siemens Energy had joined forces with several international companies to build the industrial plant to produce e-fuel in Punta Arenas, in Punta, in, in Chile, at a site known as Haro Oni. Haro Oni. With a pilot plant to be initially built, which is expected to produce 130,000 litres of e-fuels in 2022. The capacity will then be expanded to produce 55 million litres by 2026. According to a statement, as this e-fuels primary user, Porsche is planning to use this first phase of fuel directly in its motorsport fleet at Porsche Experience Centres and later in its series production sports cars. Now, Michael Steiner, member of the executive board for research and development at Porsche AG, said Porsche was founded with a pioneering spirit. That's what drives us. We thrive on innovation. We also see ourselves as pioneers when it comes to renewable fuels and we want to drive development forward. Now, a lot of enthusiasts, when they saw the Taycan come onto the scene and now with the Project R all electric race car, you see a lot of comments on social media. Well, there goes the 911. That's it for the 911. We're done. Porsche say the 911 is the perfect fit for the e-fuel. And that statement should warm the hearts of Porsche enthusiasts around the world. And they also say that their tests so far are going very successfully. Now, Chile itself, it aims to produce the world's cheapest hydrogen and develop the country into a leading exporter of green hydrogen and its derivatives. Australia is also positioning itself to be a global leader in hydrogen. Like Chile, it has an abundance of natural resources to make this possible. Sheep! And on a side note, Siemens Energy has already started work on the next phase of the project in Chile. And the company states that it will be making use of the strong winds in Chile to power the plant. A spokesman for Siemens Energy said, we're jointly developing and realizing the world's first integrated and commercially large scale plant for producing synthetic climate neutral fuels. In Southern Chile, we're implementing one of the energy industry's most exciting projects. It means we're making an important and rapidly effective contribution to reducing CO2 emissions in the traffic and transport sector. Now the synthetic fuel made at Haro Oni is made from water 
wind energy and CO2 pulled out of the air. It is a liquid energy, produces 90% less CO2 than the fossil fuel counterpart. Now they say that this e-fuel, e-gasoline is compatible with the existing internal combustion infrastructure. Now how's it work? With us now in Stuttgart is Mr. Gernot Karl Koffen, who is chairman of the supervisory board of ExxonMobil Central Europe. Please give us your impressions of the project. For proprietary methanol to gasoline technology, the so-called MTG technology will be used to convert the methanol to synthetic gasoline. In this process, methanol is heated and then fed into a fluid bed reactor producing hydrocarbons in a gasoline range and then the gasoline will be further blended into the finished fuel. And we are excited that the first iteration of this specially formulated SO renewable racing fuel was tested on the racetrack already in Porsche's high performance motors, motorsports engine in the so called Porsche Mobile One Super Cup this year. And we expect that the second iteration will transition to e fuel sourced from the new project in Chile and is anticipated to achieve a very significant reduction of emissions. And you can certainly ask the drivers and I think they will all give the same answer. The renewable fuel boosted their racing cars and might even have increased not only the environment performance, but also made the vehicle faster. I hope Michael Steiner from Porsche will agree to that statement. Now this all sounds amazing, but a story recently posted on the website of the International Council for Clean Transport starts with a headline that says e-fuels won't save the internal combustion engine. It says that most claims about e-fuels are hard to swallow. It says that the claimed one euro 20 price point at the pump is unachievable. And it says the general process is basically inefficient. Now to talk about an energy efficiency pathway from solar power or wind power to the charging station, they say that there's a 10% efficiency loss from the charging station to the electric car is a further 20% loss, creating an efficiency pathway of 72% claim. Now compared to the e-fuel pathway from solar power, wind power to the production plant, they're claiming a 48% efficiency loss. Now this isn't aimed at Porsche specifically, they speak about Bosch in their story, but these are some big numbers. So from the production plant to the internal combustion engine car, they're claiming a further 70% loss, making the whole energy pathway 16% efficient. And that point is what their story is based on. Now, others may be trying to replace fossil fuels with the e-fuels comprehensively, but I don't think it's Porsche's aim right now to do that. Their aim is to use this e-fuels in their motorsport program and in their Porsche sports cars. In turn, they may just save internal combustion motorsport and the GT program car cars that we all love so much. Now making an e-fuel that is 90% carbon neutral, the question is what does that do for development of the internal combustion engine? If emissions restrictions slightly ease, I'm very interested to see how the engineers adapt to this fuel in the coming years. Now Porsche's unofficial response to the International Council on Clean Transport's story, a spokesman said this. People say nothing is impossible, but I do nothing every day. No, that's not the... Never mind. <laughs> Look, it's exciting times. It's great that we're trying to do this. A lot of us would love to see these cars on the road for many years to come. These are the numbers we have right now. We'll keep an eye on it. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next week.